Lost enough weight to be a guard. Yes, coming back from the States, uh, looking very trim and proper and playing a lot better for it. Over 40, almost 50 pounds he's lost. It was just amazing. Looking a bit meaner too with that haircut. You know, I think he's scaring a few people. Yes, we're always very kind to him, I must say. We don't <laughs> knock his game too much. We're always full of praise because we're going to see him after the match. Neil Turner with a nice reject there on young David Stiff. And uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the calls going Falcon's way. And some nice by play of court between Cal Bruton. He's got to play with Father. Okay, now, Cal's saying you got the wrong guy, but Al Green came down and said, good call, ref, good call, ref, because he was really sticking it to his old mate, a couple of veterans out there, and uh, they still enjoy their basketball, although I think uh, at this stage, Al's enjoying game number 300 a little more than Cal Bruton is. Well, they'll give each other heaps on the court, but after the game, they'll probably go out and have a drink together, talk about the good old times. For sure, and there have been plenty of those as Peter Harvey makes it. That's 43 plays 31. Newcastle Entertainment Center. Falcons traveling smoothly, but to their credit, after a pretty ordinary start, the Devils have managed to stay in the contest. Falcons come out of their zone and uh, playing a man to man. Yes, it fell apart just a little at the back at times, so not a bad ploy by Coach Tom Wisman to get him back looking after a man. A couple of changes. It's a pretty good five out there now. A few of the smaller men, and certainly Grant Kruger's got the quicks. But Harvey Green and Everett Stevens playing together. Well, McDaniel's back in number 34, and he is the big scoring threat for Hobart. They need him to keep firing. As we check this bench down here, there's Terry Dozier. Now, he came to training on Wednesday, went up for a rebound and did his back in again. Unlucky. Hasn't played now for some three matches and the Falcons have struggled without him. A great defensive player. And in fact, he's just a great club man. They're missing him badly. But they're trying to recover and play out there and keep their hopes alive this year. The Terminator, Andrew Valdez has something to say about that. 44 plays 33. The 11 point lead of the Falcons. Must be a hand in there. Absolutely. It was a quick call. There's been some ugly looking defense out there tonight. A lot of, uh, a lot of reaching fouls and uh, a lot of fouls all around. And it's slowing the game up, slowing the tempo of the game. Falcons out by 11 points. And uh, Hobart trying to claw their way back oh, and uh, not with much success because if they keep fouling at this rate, uh, they're not going to have many left in the last quarter. That hasn't been finesse fouling either, has it really? The, uh, the arms going in and then we saw, of course, Jason Joins go under, uh, under the scrum. I think it's probably showing the desperation that, uh, that Hobart are in. They need this one and they're probably a little over anxious on the defensive end. Well, Shane Froling's got another chance in singlet number 11. Here he is with the ball. Now he goes in and he gets dumped. As we said, not much finesse. Slather and whack underneath from Al Green. Body, two shots. Body was everything he had. All over number 11 and Froling goes to the line. Mike Johnson just took a short breather and he comes back into the game now for Everett Stevens. And Johnson really has racked up a tally, 17 points. And we're midway through the second quarter for the Newcastle Entertainment Centre, number five on screen. We're with Froling. He makes it. One more. Ten point spread. Been around for a long time. Tough player. Came up through the Victorian Junior System a couple of years ago and decided to try his luck down south. Across the straight. Here comes Johnson, always looking for a shot. They go inside, and there's McDaniel. Oh, by far their best player, but that time, well, he was unlucky because he played tremendous defense under pressure. White side into the game as Bruton sits. It's down with close and around the top to spell Dennis. He looked to shoot it. Coach is not there. Oh, there's a long bomb that time. Didn't go. Here's McDaniel. He looks steady. Oh, he's having a good game. He's the standout player for Hobart. Make no mistake. 14 points for the game. Peter Harvey takes it at Whiteside. 
came over from West Australia when the Devils were in trouble, recruited by Cal Bruton. Help was the cry. They got down there, but they didn't get down there quickly enough. And Al Green made them pay as the cheer girls go up as one. What's funny is Al Green's going down, he's driven the ball, and everyone in the stadium knows he's going to shoot it. But he's still getting those shots up, which is so amazing for someone that's 6'2". Arm wrestle. Good stuff. Al has a few words to say about it as well. A couple of guys there who just love going at it, don't they? Frolling and Al Green, two of the best competitors in the league. And there they are again. They had to give each other a knock as they went up on the jump ball. Can't help themselves. Outside, white side. Outside. <laughs> they have to get inside if he's going to score. <laughs> yes, he needs to be on the right side, white side. Here he is now. He gets it away. He dashes down. He finds close to one hand. It goes off to Frolling. They chase him down strongly. But he went up very well. No way was the call. There was an appeal for the foul. And they were of the belief that Kruger had caused some contact. But the referee made it pretty clear he was having none of it. 48 place, 39. Five minutes left. Shot straight down. All net. And didn't the bench enjoy it? You can see Terry Day. Oh, high five over there. <laughs> okay. Plenty of emotion in this contest. And Newcastle push it out now to a 11 points and Terry Dozier, have a look at him middle of your screen there, he's revving everyone up so let's get the chant happening here, well that's the sort of guy he is Paul isn't he? Yeah he is, he uh, loves the game, loves people and, uh, and I'll tell you what he's, he's really sad he's not out there right now Rolling. Okay, so as they go in to discuss it, they're really enjoying themselves now, the Newcastle Falcons. Five minutes left of second quarter action, 50 place, 39, and the Falcons have it. Here, their eyes met across a crowded showroom. He fell in love with a long, smooth body. The thought of taking a classy lady to the roughest drives thrilled him. He saw beneath the tough facade to the softness inside. His wildest dreams came true. One for each foot. Buy the one you love from Crossroads Glendale, the dealer with the biggest heart in town. Coming to you this evening from the Newcastle Entertainment Centre, five minutes, 14 left in the first half. The Falcons lead 50 points to 39, but the Hobart Devils are hanging on and hanging on grimly. Thanks mainly to the efforts of uh, the likes of Wayne McDaniel, who's been a tremendous offensive force. David Close has knocked down a couple of long bombs. But really, that man McDaniel is playing a lone hand for his club. The next five minutes, Greg, uh, important for, uh, for both teams here, for the Falcons to uh, put their lead away, put it in a winning situation at halftime by getting, extending the lead to 15 or more. And the Hobart team very anxious to get it under 10 before the half to give them a chance for the second. Yes, I think if they could go in at around five or six down, they'd be pretty pleased with their effort given they gave up a 19-point lead at the start of the game, which is awfully tough, and perhaps they'll pay for that in the latter stages, the effort of getting back into it. They go high now. It's with David Close. Down low. Couldn't find Joe Hurst, and in fact, Kruger was quick. Played good defence. They go to Joyce. Oh, magnificent pass. Oh, put down that assist. That was worth two for the stat sheet. Everett Stevens, great pass. He made Joyce work for it, and because he worked for it, he found himself in the clear under the bucket. That was great. I'll tell you what, Greg, Jason Joyce is showing a great deal of desire for a big fella. He really is um, making the most of his opportunities out there, both last week and this week, getting after all the loose ball. Green takes it up and he's still got the ball and Whiteside is running him a merry dance. He's showing off tonight. Three hundredth game he's entitled to. He can do what he likes. There's that pretty shot again from Jason. Magnificent. Terrific technique. I wonder what he plays golf like. Down she goes. Nice shot. David Close scores for his team. And a little bit of disorganising disorganisation there. And they almost paid for it. They were disorganised as they went up in defence. And it left gaps everywhere. But they've got the ball back now, the Devils. Sval Dennis. That's white side number 25. Sval Dennis goes low and takes joins with him. Push and shove. Kruger and McDaniel. Long bomb. And he knocks it down. 
The white side, good shot. They certainly needed it. And that makes it interesting now. 52 plays 44, so they've got it back within eight points. And there's still three and a half minutes left of first half action. Well, they've really done a great job, the Devils, Paul Kuyper, and if they can just hold it together, uh, they'll be in the game in the second half. Everything was against them in the first quarter. They got all, all the calls against them. They couldn't make a shot. Eventually, you're going to start putting the ball in the hole. If they've calmed down, they start to run their offense. They've got some good rebounds, and uh, they're starting to catch up. At the other end, of course, well, Al Green is one of the most successful players in the game, and he certainly is enjoying himself. Oh, Tom Wisman's got that. He's a bit agitated. Okay, that's Tom Wisman there. And next week, of course, it's going to be a great game. It's a real big tune-up time for the Australian Boomers in their Olympic preparation. The NBL American All-Stars, they play. A lot of people are saying that the All-Star team doesn't have enough strength. It comes to you live at 8.30. A lot of people are saying that All-Star team is not quite big enough to match the Boomers. Well, I don't think they could put together a team big enough to match the Boomers. They've got about three seven-footers, and uh, there aren't that many seven-footers in Australia, unfortunately. Um, a lot of the Americans now... Are they bring out the league are either point guards or mm. power forwards and uh, if you're going to put the Americans out there they're going to be very talented but a bit smaller Paul Terry D Terry Dozier looks unlikely to play in that game um, who's likely do you think uh, to get the chance to replace him oh I think they could pick any number of uh, power forwards in the league Ken um, McClary from Sydney or Dave Simmons from I would say Ken McClary would be the uh, obvious choice since there was such a promotion about him not making it <laughs> Mainly from Sydney, of course. Oh. <laughs> and then they went on the break that time, Hobart. It was Joe Hurst trying to make a strong move to the basket, but he was dragged down by Grant Kruger. 52-44, and we have seen in recent times as Kruger takes a break after that foul, the Falcons lose the plot, lose their way. Well, it's very hard to keep uh, intensity for 48 minutes, and basketball is so mental. teams are going to come back on you and uh, that's what's happening right now. Well Hurst has made that one and they're right back in it. He shoots him at 81% and improves his percentage still further and it's a six point break. It's 52 plays 46 and they're right back in the event, in the contest. This will be no cakewalk for the Falcons. They're going to have to play it right down to the wire hands that time from close who I thought pushed Johnson out of the way referee didn't call it Johnson can't believe it how about, right mixing, side. How about mixing up their defense pretty well back in the zone and uh, coming up with the ball that time to give them another chance to, uh, to score at the other end Falcons still in their man-to-man -man. just over two and a half minutes left of the first half so plenty of time for plenty of things to happen out there oh magnificent lead that's why they call him jumping Joe he went up in the left-hand tip-in. Gets his team within four points. So what a what an exciting and dramatic comeback from Hobart. This is not uh, pleasing Newcastle coach Tom Wiesman any way, shape or form to finish this half. Al that Green. might make him happier, though. The score becomes 54 for the Falcons. Hobart, 48. There he goes again. Hurst was right up there. They get it away on the break, but only as far as Val Dennis flicks it across Whiteside. Hurst and Whiteside. It's with David Close. If they can score here, they'll drag it down to a four-point game. Oh, inside he was there, McDaniel. Clever play. He's working that baseline, that weak side baseline, very, very well. Hobart extending their defense up the court as we saw the Falcons do in the opening minutes of the game. Hobart giving them something back. Al Green goes inside, puts it up. The tap away only went as far as Johnson, and he put it down. But only for two points. Takes his tally to 20. Those codrills are really working. Out this week with the flu. Certainly doesn't, hasn't done any harm to his shooting arm. 
They might have had a little bit of repetitive strain injury and the break's done in the world of good. Here he goes now. Oh, grab hold of him that side, David Close. Put your hand up. Go stand in the corner. <laughs> Guilty. Four red on the arm. Two. Yeah, it'll be a couple of shots that time for Al Green, who was on his way to a bucket. Close was having none of it. 57 plays 50. Let's have a look at that again. You'll see Close just reach in here. Whack. Right on the... Everett Stevens not able to get the roll there. He's only he's had a very quiet first half to his standards. Only coming up with four points so far as he steps the line to see if he can uh, get it to five. And he does. Got one in play. Everett Stevens very quiet by his standards. Averaging uh, upon 25 points a game, but only has six for the game so far. So expect something from him in the second half. Because he generally doesn't stay quiet throughout. He will be there. It's with Whiteside. They look low to the, the Terminator, Andrews Valdenis. A little fake. Doesn't go for it. Oh, Whiteside shows us some quicks down the baseline. Inside Hurst was really going for that. He was going to do something spectacular. The Falcons reached in. And he had the highlight film flashing in front of his eyes, I think, and he was think he did. going for it. Only six seconds left on the shot clock. That's with Spaldenis. He goes strongly to the hoop. Very, very strong power move by Andrew Spaldenis. Down she goes. So it gives them a couple. 59-52. That's the scoreline. And the Devils have a chance to get a little closer via one extra shot. He was hit as he took a shot, so he gets a chance to make that a three-point play. Jason Joins takes a spell. Chris Steele, number 15, is into the lane there, into the rebounding spot, down low. And Spell Dennis makes it. With Chris Steele, there's the scoreline, six point break. The Falcons have it and have had it all the way through tonight. Oh, great shot. Everett Stevens, jink and move, and down she went. 41 seconds left of the first half. David Close takes it up. There's the scoreline, eight points in it. Oh, look at McDaniel. He really is attacking that basket. Tried to make the baseline. The foul was called against Neil Turner. And the shot's going to McDaniel. 33 seconds left in the first half. Newcastle led at one stage by 19 points. Chant goes up. Daniel looks a little bit exhausted there. Using his time at the line to take a breather. McDaniel's a very consistent player of the years. Um, he's, he maintains it's because of his uh, stretching that he does. Um, he's very flexible, keeps him away from injuries, and uh, plus the weights that he does, and uh, that's his consistent uh, form. Points the lead. 30 seconds left, or just under it now, down to 20. Out round they go. Everett Stevens is free for three. Doesn't make it though, and Sval Dennis goes up and rips it down with some authority. Gets it away to Whiteside. Joe Hurst. You can see he wants to get into the game. He's just not the player he was, but perhaps we'll see something from him before this one's out. Whiteside, it was always going to be flat. Oh, but Sval Dennis strong. Well, Sval Dennis will be disappointed because he did all the hard work then and he made the shot. Yeah, the foul goes against number seven. That's, of course, for Newcastle, Everett Stevens. But Sval Dennis would have rather, I think, the game go on and the advantage played because he made a good basket. But the referee had called it with a minute or a second left on the clock. Hobart's coach, Cal Bruton, will be very happy with the outcome of, the, of this first half, as it turns out. His team's trailing now by only five points and another shot from the line. That's an excellent effort, considering the deficit in which they started early in the game. And Spell Dennis, new lease of life since he joined the Tasmanians. Oh, long bomb, it won't count. It didn't go down there for Everett Stevens. So that's half time now. And the score 61 57. Newcastle had it. They had a big, big lead. But they've blown it to some degree, and we're in for a great second half. We'll be back shortly.
return to the Newcastle Entertainment Centre. Looking forward to the second half of what's been an enthralling match between the Newcastle Falcons and the Hobart Devils. 61 plays 57, and they reeled in a 19-point deficit, the Devils, to get within four at half-time. As we head into the third quarter, just looking back over that first half, Hobart shot at 54%. It was a good effort once they got rolling. The Falcons at 47%, so some respectable shooting. As far as the percentages go from the free-throw line, Hobart shot 13 from 13. That was 100% shooting, and that played a big part in getting themselves back into the event here of the shooters. We saw Wayne McDaniels make 78% from the floor, and he's right up there in double figures, as is Mike Johnson, who has 20 points for the match. So we're back underway now. It's with number 25, Ronald Whiteside. Gets it round to Joe Hurst and down to McDaniel. He has been great, McDaniel, in this game. Justin Cass is out there starting the second half. Andrews fell Dennis in the middle. And he's got the ball low, and the zone just opens up a little. And nice finger roll from McDaniel. Does it easily down the middle. Wayne McDaniel is a real money man. That, I mean, they go to him, and when the, he has the ball in his hands, it usually results in two points for the Hobart. Yes, and he's done that on plenty of occasions tonight. In fact, he has 20 points. And Mike Johnson replies at the other end. This is developing into a real shootout. And so far tonight, Johnson has 24 points. That's a mighty performance. With Jason Joins gets it back inside to Everett Stevens. Must have been a travel, I felt. Or a foul. Anyway, it comes away now with the Tasmanians. It's with number 34. That's him, Wayne McDaniel. Powerful influence on the game. Joe Hurst still finding his feet back in the NBL. Getting better with every outing. Just faked. Flicked it around the outside. Long shot. Didn't go anywhere. Picked up again by McDaniel. Quick Justin Cass. Up he went and so did Hurst. Out to McDaniel. Tries the jumper from the foul line and she goes down. And he makes it 22 points for the night. And we've got a two-point ball game. 63 plays 61. And the Falcons just have it. By a thread. Falcons uh, are, aren't rebounding with a lot of desperation right now. And, uh, also, the zone is wide open in the middle, allowing the uh, Tasmanians to score very easily. Well, great effort that time from Michael Johnson. He's shown us a couple of times tonight that despite the flu during the week, although he is struggling to get back and down onto offense now, that he really does have the quicks. He runs that floor beautifully. Oh, great stuff that time. All the skill, strong baseline drive. Took his man on and blast pass that time from Al Green. 65-61. The Falcons showing a little bit of desperation there with Mike Johnson doing well. They get inside and they pick up the ball, but it goes back to McDaniel. Inside now with Hurst, and he gets pushed. And pushed rather bluntly, too. Foul is on number 11, hit him on the arm. We're going this way. It goes against Grant Kruger. Yeah, long, James. And it gives Hobart the ball from the side. That's Grant Kruger's fourth foul. You'll have to be careful from here on in. In fact, he'll go out of the game. Neil Turner goes over and announces to the bench that he's coming in at the next break. And that break is right now. Falcons from the side, and so they get the opportunity to make that substitution. There's Cal Bruton leaning back, but not so relaxed. It's pretty tense because the importance of this game has not been lost on either side. A loss here will just about spell the end for season 92. And the Falcons seem to be getting out of the blocks like Carl Lewis, but they finish like me, very, very slowly. Yeah, look, there's Cal Bruton, thought he should have had the ball. Not happy, but, uh, yeah, there's something there. As you say, Paul, and you mentioned earlier, it's hard to keep the intensity up all night. But, oh, the starts they've made have been fantastic, the Falcons, and then the finish sometimes not so good, but there's turn number two. It's all part of maturity. Um, a lot of teams come out and uh, can play really hard on emotion, but the mature, smart teams play consistently throughout the whole game. And pound and pound away at you. Well, Joe Hurst picks up the offensive foul, and he's picked up a couple of those, which is to the credit of Newcastle's defense, getting down there, anticipating well, and making the position. That's his fourth foul. The two of those have been for offensive charges. He just seemed to be uh, lacking in confidence when he goes to the basket man who can jump that knee injury uh, might be concerning him Mel Green goes baseline that's a charge offensive foul quick call white side good position and it goes against Al Green well, with so many good players now getting themselves into foul trouble this could come down to the battle of the benches 
And I don't know how you see it, Graham Baker, but there's probably not much in it. When you look down the benches of both sides, strength-wise. Yes, um, I agree, Greg. The Falcons' uh, bench has been used uh, well tonight, and so too has Cal Bruton for the Hobart Cascade Devils. They've gone to the bench with their players as well and uh, it's as you say with the amount of fouls that are, that are uh, getting up there on the board it's starting to look a bit like Christmas time and the fourth quarter is going to be an important one for both teams if the scores are as close as they are at the moment yes that tree is lighting up we're around the outside now with McDaniel Oh, good hands that time, Everett Stevens. He pushes the ball back out. It only goes as far as close and then to McDaniel. It's with Justin Cass now, and he finds a little gap. He goes in, turns around. McDaniel had very good position there. Went up for a strong shot, but couldn't make it. And I think he felt pretty confident when he went into the end that that one was going down. It didn't, and the Falcons get an opportunity to spread their lead. They lead by six. 67 plays 61. And this crucial match, and it's a push, and it's an offensive foul. And it's against Al Green, who gives Justin Cass a bit of a kick. And they go out at the two number tens. He faked it, he faked it, he faked it. That's Al letting the referee know what he thought about the call. He I wish has I... four fouls. Sorry, I wish I could see that again because it did look like an Academy Award performance from Cassero. It's a smart play by him. Yeah, let's have uh, a look. You got it. Yeah, I, I know Cass is skinny, but I don't think that would have knocked him down. Yes, of course. Smart Paul play Pryor by him, the though. Newcastle Falcons centre, the guest commentator tonight. Well, he may have faked it, but it looked to me as though there was some contact. Oh, just a swat attempt there by number 50, Neil Turner. And again, McDaniel goes in. Well, it was a tough call, perhaps. There wasn't a lot of contact there, but it was enough to uh, urge John Payne to call the foul. He may have faked it a little, but I don't think it was worth an Oscar, but that was certainly worth three. It was Mike Johnson going up. This is the best Mike Johnson shot for a long time at home. He's having uh, an outstanding game from outside the three-point line. They push the ball up the court now. It's with Whiteside and on to close. Big hands from the Newcastle defence trying to make it difficult. McDaniel, oh, he's having a whale of a game. And down she goes again. And he's something else. His teammates know it too. They're giving him the ball at the... Uh, every opportunity down the court and he's yes. making the most of it 26 points now for mcdaniel seven seconds left of third quarter action and it's 69 65. these two teams desperate for victory seven minutes left of the third quarter and of course hobart have not won a game on the road this year They've had six attempts and they haven't come up trumps, but this is by far their best chance. Johnson, he makes it. And the foul. Let's get the call from the referee. The crowd liked it. Foul from four, four, four. Yes, he gets another shot, so he's made three, and he gets a chance to make it a four-point play because he was fouled in the act of shooting. We got one in play. It's Mike Johnson's fifth three-pointer for the game. And uh, certainly lighting it up from out there as he nails an extra point from the foul line. It's easy money for him. 28 points for Mike Johnson now. And we've still got seven minutes left of this third quarter. My goodness gracious. Yes, it's a decent sort of performance. And it certainly helps the team out. 73 plays 65. There it is. 6.46 left on the clock. The third quarter. Whiteside pinches in. Dishes off there. It's with close around the outside. Again, Whiteside. And not a big man. And he's having trouble making inroads into the Newcastle defence. And in fact, they come up with it through a strong rebound. Neil Turner doing his job. And now it's with Al Green running the point. Oh, he just passed straight past Cass. They're really going out at the two number tens. And McDaniel sweeps the boards, drags it down, made a brilliant pass, and in fact forced the foul against the number 10, and I believe that could be his fifth foul. So he's only allowed five. His sixth foul will see him go out of the game. So Al Green in game number 300 is having a strong game, but we might not see much more of him. And in fact, he sits. Coach Tom Wisman decides it's time to take a break, Al. We might get you back later, but for the time being, he'll go into reserve. Suck it up, take a drink. And Dennis 
skibble there just having a chat to him. Again, it's Turner off the boards. They go low, Steele comes inside. Might have been a little charge there, but it wasn't called. And in fact, Hobart comes away with the ball on the end line. And they'll make a substitution. And the timeout is called now. We have six minutes left in the third quarter. And the Falcons still travelling sweetly. They hold the lead. 73 points to 65. Buy the one you love from Crossroads Glendale, the dealer with the biggest heart in town. And from the Newcastle Entertainment Centre, it's the Cascade Tassie Devils. They're down there in the huddle. They're coming out. They're coming out eight points down with six seconds, six minutes left, rather, of third quarter action. The scorers leading the way, Mike Johnson with 28, and Al Green 13. It's for the Newcastle side, while at the other end of the court, it's been a one-man band. Wayne McDaniel with 26, being backed up to some degree by David Close, who has eight points. Oh, great swat away that time from number 50, Neil Turner. He's played big defence in the last few minutes, and he's been one tower of strength, which has helped this side get away now to an effective 10-point break. 75 play 65, 5 minutes 43 left in the third quarter. Cal Bruton back, dishes off. It was nice play to Justin Cass, but his shot didn't go down. He's got to be disappointed with that. The open shots they must make if they're going to stay with the Falcons. And don't they need a win? Both these sides dropping out of the eight. And in fact, a win tonight won't even get them back, but at least it'll put them in a position to, to challenge. But Whiteside travels. It's with Everett Stevens. And what a find he's been for the Falcons. Brought out here during the off-season, and he's been a great player. And there he is again down on the base, picks up the assist. Jason Joins did well. 77 plays 65. Falcons looking a fair bit more intense than they have in this, in this second half and uh, starting to show the results for it as they extend their lead to 12. A lot more hands up on defense and a lot more intensity. Oh, there he is, the Black Pearl. That was a nice shot from Cal Bruton. Gets himself into the game. The coach is playing. Everett Stevens doesn't drop. Turner up strongly that time, couldn't make it. And now Bruton runs the floor, he takes it straight at him and dishes off beautifully and that time, no mistake, Justin Cass on the break and they're back in the game again. 77 plays 70, Newcastle has it, but only just, and they won't lie down, the visitors from the south. Cal Bruton had uh, a good influence on the game for the Hobart team in the first half by calming, their, calming the forces down when he came out in the court, got them motivated, got the ball around in, in between hands and uh, got them back on track. Yes, Here we he... see him doing the similar thing in the second half. He controls the ball well and that time over the top, it's stiff. He goes in, he flicks up a two-hander. <laughs> it wasn't out of the textbook, but by gee, it was effective and he picks up two and now it's just a five-point game. 77 plays 72. And they just keep on coming. Neil Turner blocked him out, but didn't have his hands up ready. And uh, Stiff was able to get in there and get the easy two. Stiff shows remarkable agility for a big, tall, tall guy. He's got a uh, good outside shot. He takes the ball inside. Very versatile. Oh, they put it away. And it comes down through the hands of Bruton now who just takes all the right options. Time he tried to take them on as Sean Dennis flicked the ball away. They take it again. Bruton comes to the weak side and he leaves it to number 23 into the game. Anthony Stewart, three-point specialist. So perhaps they're looking for him to light up from outside. He looks at the basket too. 
Right side. Nice move inside. Oh, good bump. He sure did. You moved into him, called referee John Payne. And number 50, the big man on your screen, Neil Turner, did just that. Gave him a little shove. Put him off his shot, though. Sends him to the line. It's 72, 72 playing 77. So it's a five-point spread. And again, Newcastle, they got it out to 12. But uh, Obart just keep on coming, uh, Paul Kuyper. And uh, what are you, what's your assessment at this stage? Well, I just think that, as we said before, that uh, both teams are desperate. And uh, Hobart is not going to give up. Um, the Falcons are not going to give up. But as long as everyone's scrapping the way they are, it's going to be a close game. Tom Wisman now having a chat to his charges, just trying to keep them in mind on the job. But there is some a great sport coming up on NRTV. Fantastic matches coming up later on today. You'll see the game between New South Wales and New Zealand from Waratah Rugby Stadium. And the Kiwis are out to reassert their superiority on the rugby world. They'll play some over attacking stuff and don't miss it later on today. And of course, on Thursday night, Mike Gibson and Eddie Maguire put it all together in the sports show. Thoroughly entertaining and very informative at the same time, Mike and Eddie. And right now we're with the Falcons. There's Peter Harvey and Dennis Kibble, the veteran. Well, it must be said he's not playing now. <laughs> no, but I'm sure he'd probably like to be out there to give it a bit of a go. Yeah, you can, you, can, you can take a run around the block first. Dennis, <laughs> Dennis is a very motivated type of person. He likes to show by example. And I'm sure that uh, Coach Tom Wisman here will be talking about effort, talking about concentration. It's all the little things that are going to count now going down to the line like this. With three minutes 20 left in this quarter. A lead of five points about to be uh, chopped away by, uh, by David Swift at the foul line. And uh, they're, they're going to, it's all the little things that count, the blocking out, the strong rebound, the effort to get after that loose ball is going to determine which team comes away with the goods. Yes, he makes it. 77 plays 73 with one to come. Even Elvis pirouetting on the sideline didn't disturb him, I think. Good concentration. And he does well. He just ignored Elvis. He did. I think everyone else did too. <laughs> Eight points for uh, David Swift. Stiff. Swift, Swift is stiff. Oh, there he is again. He certainly involved the young fellow. He certainly is. I've been most impressed with his effort and with his skills. Looks like a very cool customer as we see him with a bit of a wry grin on his face, walking up the court. And he's walking up to take one and one. He was in possession. Grant Kruger picking up his fifth foul there, so that's an important one. And in fact, he sits. So foul trouble, it's all over the place for both sides, but this man still has not in any trouble. And he makes one. Well, he is a cool customer. Walked the floor. Made it. 77-75. Newcastle by just two, and we could have a one-point game. This young man can knock it down, and he does. David Stiff, good player, single number 14. We're back now with Sean Dennis. Going at it against Anthony Stewart. Goes low now to Jason, joins and there's, well this time he, he thought he had the block. Then what's the call? Well I thought John Payne half went up for the foul, but then no. It's been called for a travel, Greg. A travel, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I thought uh, he was going to call a foul there on number 14, but no, the travel was called. So they swing it round now through Whiteside. Good stiff, cross quarter. Goes out and finds Stewart. Tries to make one. There's our man again. 12 stiff. points and uh, having a, a good influence for the Hobart team in these remaining minutes of the third quarter. As we oh, see Everett gosh. Stevens take it to the hole, scores it, gets the Falcons back with the lead, 79 to 78. He's certainly going to have to involve himself a little bit more in this game if the Falcons are going to come away with victory here tonight. 
So it's round there now with number 23, Anthony Stewart to Cal Bruton. The Black Pearl with Stewart now again. Around it goes. Bruton decides to take the bomb, doesn't drop. Oh, over the top. That was McDaniel leaning all over. Sean Dennis cutting up trumps. McDaniel keen to get the ball, likes his chances against Steele, but now he's in the middle of that zone against Joins. The bigger man to round the outside. Look down low for Stewart, he's free. He does it, he goes his own, and his own way's a good way. 28 points for a very good player, Wayne McDaniel tonight, since England number 34. So they've got the lead. The visitors are in front. It's Hobart 80. Mike Johnson turns. Can't deliver. Oh, it's physical. Bruton charged in. Now, who's the foul against? Number 14, is it? Or 55? Yes, it's against Carl Bruton. It had to be. He went in there and really laid body on. Have a look at this. Something out of the Australian football manual, that one. And not much doubt about it. Hip and shoulder and everything else. He really went at it, Bruton, that time, and they're on the money again. This time it's 25, picks up the foul on Whiteside. So it's a foul fest here at the Newcastle Entertainment Centre tonight. And both sides are being just as indiscreet as the other. Sean Tennis takes it round again now up against Stewart. It's down low with Chris Steele. Physical stuff off the board. Oh, it goes low and finds Jason Joyce dashing through from the weak side. Nice pass from Chris Steele. Through the defence, he gave a, a little bit of a no-look pass to Jason Joyce, floating in underneath on the baseline. Yeah, nice effort. Gives the lead by one. Newcastle just with the nose in front. Stiff gets belted by Jason Joins. Let him know he was there. Stewart, as we pointed out, three-point bomber. But that time, he didn't go down. Comes away now through Johnson. He stands. He shoots from three-point land. It went in and went out. But, oh, in there to clean it up, Everett Stevens. There's your clock. 26 seconds left of the third quarter. And it's 83 plays 80. And we're in for a thrilling finish. Knock him down. Drag him out. Struggle. Two teams just outside the gate and battling to get back into it. They need a win tonight. Cal Bruton. Falcons haven't rebounded very well out of the zone defense tonight. Um, in the fourth quarter, they're going to have to pick that up a lot if they're going to win. The, uh, the Devils are getting two or three shots every time down the floor. Guest commentator Paul Kuyper. One second left. Chris Steele tries one. Gave it a chance, but it didn't go down. That's the end of the third quarter. So 12 minutes of basketball and effectively 12 minutes of the season left for one of these two teams. 83 points. 83 points plays 80. It's the Falcons over the Devils. And we're in for a classic finish. So stay with us tonight. And our two teams are about to return to the floor of the Newcastle Entertainment Centre for final quarter action. And right now it's the Newcastle Falcons 83, leading the Hobart Devils 80. We've been privileged over the last couple of weeks to have guest commentator Paul Kuyper with us. He's out at the Falcons lineup with a knee injury. Paul, it's been great to have you, and there have been some thrillers, but this is about as close as it gets. And what about the foul trouble tonight? That could play an important factor in this last few minutes. Uh, Al Green's on five, uh, Grant Kruger's on five, Jason Joins is on four, and Neil Turner's on four. So um, if those guys get in more, it's going to be a real tough situation for the Falcons. Absolutely, and at the other end of the spectrum there, Joe Hurst has four. They certainly need him. Shane Frolling has four, but the other guys are not in too much trouble. So if anyone's in trouble, it's the Falcons, foul-wise. White side. Looks low to Stiff, can't find him. Comes round to Stewart, playing the perimeter game. Oh, down low, big gap, and he finds it. He's good. He's a good player. That was Stiff. Both of you just get your arms out and just play the game. He's having a good game, Stiff, and he's getting a lot of emotion into it. He's getting excited, and that time he went straight at Sean Dennis and referee Payne just settles things down. It's a one-point game. It's 83-82. And he tries the pass, which just just comes off, and that's all. Well, it doesn't, because it went over the end line. It was tipped over by Sean Dennis. It was certainly an ambitious pass that time from Jason Joins. 
and he didn't make it. Cal Bruton with the ball now. They go wide white side. He's free and he pumps and he scores too. Now there was a foul called underneath and it goes against Wayne McDaniel, but I don't think it'll Basket's negate good. the score. The basket is good. Clear call from the referee. We're going that way from baseline. The Falcons having a great deal of trouble out of this 1-3-1 zone and covering down the baseline. We just saw the uh, outside shot then and before David Swift uh, inside um, making uh, easy baskets. They're going to have to cover up for that. Yeah, the scoreboard here at the Entertainment Centre showing 86-82, but that's not right. The Devils are closer than that. There's a foul called, and they're going to sort this out now, as you might have heard the referee under the commentary. I'll go sort this one out. So the Falcons bench doing the job. <laughs> They're keeping the Falcons in front, but there it is. It's 85-82. Is that still right? I still don't think that's right. They've got to be 84-84. Yeah, we'll find out in a moment. They've just got to get it right. There's the scoreboard. Tom Wisdom's not arguing. I think no. he thinks it's right. <laughs> Tom's very quiet. <laughs> yeah, plenty of discussion over there, and they've just got to get this right. It's crucial. Yeah, 83-85. We believe the score is 86-85 to the Devils. Is that right? Three-point play okay. from Whiteside. Well, the score is 83-80. 83-80 now. Here's 85, a lot of confusion. Or a lot of trouble here because this is important, isn't it? They might have to go and check the NRTV replay. Now we've got the Devils in front. 85-83. Our scorer here, Richard Bates, indicates that it should be 85-83. Yeah, he says, yeah, Richard's uh, done all the analysis, you're right. He doesn't miss much. He doesn't miss much, but unfortunately, Everett Stevens missed that one. So we should get Batesy out there and shoot a few. Down she goes. One point contest, 85 plays 84. Hobart in front with Cal Bruton now. Flicks it back outside. Stewart loves the three-pointer. And that's why it's a fairly flat shot. But, oh, it was accurate. And now they get out to a four-point break. 88-84. And the Falcons in trouble before their home fans. It's do or die. Ten minutes to go. We're a long way out. But they need to get cracking. Al Green might be the order of the day here. I think they need his experience and, uh, and emotion out there to get the Falcons back on the boil. Jason Jorins was strong underneath. They need him to two fire up as well. That was on number 14. It was all over him for a push. We've got two. 14. And won't Tom Wisman be disappointed if he loses this one? He needs it. He needs it desperately. Clever coach. But he can't go out and play the game. Well, it's been a nightmare few weeks for Tom Wisman. Uh, two players going out. Um, the guys this week having flu. They didn't have enough guys to, to go five on five. Um, it's just been so hard for him. Needed that one. Jason Joyce can't connect. So they missed a couple of foul shots and they're telling. Needs to make this one. And as you saw, didn't look like missing. Found the net. Stewart brings it up and finds Justin Cass. Andrews Faldenis back into the game. They need his strength, the Devils. It's the assessment of the coaching staff. So he's out there with Wayne McDaniel in the forward spot. McDaniel's played well. Oh, that was a very nice bucket too. That was Stewart finding a lane down the middle. They opened up a little. But he took advantage and he made a lane. 90 plays 85. I hope our Devils are getting uh, some, some uh, great uh, help from the bench here. Both uh, Stiff and Stewart are contributing marvellously well for Coach Bruton. He'll be very happy with his charges off the bench. Yes, they've taken the crowd out of the game for the time being and something exciting's got to happen for the Falcons to get themselves going because they're just going through the motions. That time Turner gets up and he does well. Now here's your man, Al Green. Graham Baker called him into the game and we'll see what he can do. Is it play on? It doesn't count. The referee blew the whistle a little too early. And disappointment on the face of Mike Johnson because I think we could have well let that one go and called it up a little later. Let's have a look at it again. And the crowd's booing and one 
can understand the disappointment here. Look, there's a reaching foul, but Johnson was well and truly into the shot he was going to make, and it would have been much easier to let that one go. That's a very tough call. Yeah, because it was a terrific shot and it deserved more. Desperation. The Black Pearl down on the ground there, Cal Drew. Leading his team by example, as he knows best. Getting after those loose balls. They're the little things that are going to count in this game. Everett Stevens went up and found the imposing defense there. There's a nice shot. Playing game number 300, number 10, Al Green. And didn't they need that? 87 plays 90, and they're in front of the Devils. Al Green's 15th point for the game. Falcons in a uh, back into a zone now. See Bruton shooting from outside, but no blocking out. And, and here, young boy of Stewart, Anthony Stewart, coming up with the rebound and the two points. Big contribution from him. Seven points. Didn't play in the first half. All those points have come in the second half. Yes, he did well then. There was no defensive blocking. And Cal Bruton strips the ball. It's called for the foul. Mike Johnson wanted to go to the line and said he was in the act of shooting, but I don't think so. I think on, on that occasion it's just the one and one. And John Payne calls it as such. Four fouls on Cal Bruton. Warning to the bench there not to jump up and get too involved. I think they want to get out and play ten on five. And the referee just telling the Newcastle, uh, the uh, Hobart bench to settle down a little. Oh, he makes it. To make it to it's 92.88. Hobart in front of Newcastle. Newcastle in front of their home crowd, hoping not to disappoint. Three point spread now, 92 plays. 89. He's been impressive, Stuart. Good young prospects in this side from down south. And some seasoned campaigners as well. McDaniel's one of them, and here he goes. Yes. Nice shot inside. Once he got the ball from there, he was going to be impossible to stop. That brings up his 30th point. He's been a little quiet for the last couple of minutes, but he could be saving himself for this last eight minutes as it looks like going down to the wire. Yep, the only thing that would have stopped him there was a Mack truck. <laughs> it's not in the rules. Once McDaniel gets the ball, I think he needs to be double teamed because he... Nine times out of ten, he'll shoot the ball when he gets it down low, and he's not going to pass it. Well, he's certainly not leading the assist, but uh, he's doing extremely well with the ball when he has it. And uh, I don't think I'd be passing the ball that much if, I'm sh if I was shooting like he has tonight. Uh, playing nicely now. Nice organisation. Cal Bruton shouting the instructions and his boys are responding well. And there's Andrews Valdenis making a lane to the basket. And it seems to me there's just a little bit of a gap opening up down the middle there. Once they spread the ball around, Newcastle not adjusting quickly enough. And it's allowing a, a lane to the basket right down the middle. And the last three buckets have come from right in front. Hand foul. Goes against Wayne McDaniel. He only has three, so he's going to be out there until the finish. And they've got a nice handy lead now. It's Hobart 96, Falcons 89. And a timeout is called, and it's called by Newcastle. They certainly need it. They started this game absolutely on fire. They came out of the blocks with remarkable pace. They just blew the visitors away early and led by 19. But look at that scoreline now. It's just a credit to Hobart, the way they've come back into this game, Graham Baker. It certainly is, Greg, and uh, they've done extremely well. And the Falcons are uh, all certainly worried about it as we see them huddle down for their timeout with seven minutes 34 to go. They've led for most of the game. They've had big leads and they're worried. Whereas the Hobart team, they'd be feeling very confident at this day. Seven minutes. 34 to go. They're out by seven points and uh, their biggest lead for the game. And number 55, you can see there, shouting the instructions is the coach, Cal Brute. And I think, well, he's probably been the difference while McDaniel's done all the shooting. Oh, here's the girls out there now. Yeah, well, Cal's done all the shooting, certainly uh, while McDaniel's done the shooting, Cal's been pretty effective leading the court. He's been a leader tonight, um, hasn't scored a lot, which I think is pretty unusual because he's a fantastic shooter. Um, but he, he has done a great job of leadership, as we saw before, diving on the floor and uh, distributing the ball well to those who's, who are going to put the ball in the hole. Whereas the Falcons right now are running down the court with their heads down like they've already lost the game. 
Tom Wisman is going to stress to them they need to play a lot harder in these last few minutes. So certainly some players of the future. We saw a, a few pitters of the future too a moment ago. Young girls having their chance. Taste of stardom here at the Newcastle Entertainment Centre. Last week it was John Denver, and tonight it's the Featherettes. So there's a hush comes over the stadium. Hasn't it gone quiet? I think everyone's willing this one in. And it's Neil Turner at the line. And he pops it in too. So it's 96 plays 90. There's seven and a half minutes left. And Hobart leads. Giving him every chance to crowd up. They quietly gets it. Now there's a bit of noise. So they've got to play some defense and tighten it up. The Falcons are there to get away with it. But Cal Bruton seems to be able to detect the openings and is calling all the right shots. McDaniel Isles, good intimidation, almost to travel. Takes some joys, a little clumsy off the rebound, a little bit of push and shove. He almost went over, but he gets it away now. We're across court. Johnson's free and he travels. And he did, he did. And he says, I did, but what's the replay, Mike? Not much doubt about it. He took the two steps. Well, you never think you make mistakes, especially when you hit such a beautiful... It was a magnificent shot, wasn't yeah, it? It's got right. a heartbreaker. Still, he's got the sort of courage to come back, and he almost picks up the steal there. Intercept. Michael's getting excited, and that's uh, a good sign for Newcastle. If he gets emotional in the game, it tends to rub off on the other players. And that's certainly what they need. He's played he's beautifully this years. year, hasn't he? He's played great. And the travel goes to the other end, so it's all squared up in the travel department. Even though it was after the whistle. Oh, appalling play. Jason Joyce just, but he wasn't concentrating. And over the top comes Fal Dennis. And a couple of uh, unfortunate mistakes there. Just wasn't concentrating. Just threw it to the other guy. Those things happen, but gee, that's costly. And it allows Hobart to blast away to a seven-point advantage. Neil Turner. It's down low now. Everett Stevens got a light up. Goes inside. Oh, is foul bad? Or is he? Call for a charge, I think, Greg. Call for the charge. Well, that surprises me. I'm sure. Looked a little tough. We've got a replay of that. Let's take a look at it now. You'll see Everett Stevens here. And he goes up. Well, pretty fit on the replay. Very, very good play by Spell Dennis. Yeah, it was. And we're a long way away down here at one end of the court, the opposite end, and clearly on the replay it showed that Spell Dennis did a good job. Number 50, Neil Turner for the Falcons, has a, has a job to do here on defence. He's marking Wayne McDaniel. He's made two nice blocks the last two times down the court. A nice shot there. David Close it was. Good boy, it's getting tough now for the Falcons. It's 100, plays 91. Sean Dennis goes up and it comes off the side of the backboard. And it's once again in the hands of the men with a flashy red singlet. So I like this strip. The Devils, it looks good. And they're playing well. They're now out by nine points. Yeah, and uh, looking like they've got the goods for this game. The Falcons are going to have to find something new here to get themselves back in it. That might do the trick. An air ball. Yeah, it wasn't a good shot. Mike Johnson again showing that he's not quitting. He went right after it. Now he tries a long bomb. Doesn't go. Everyone goes up for it and it comes down. Well, the brakes are going the way of the Devils and Hobart gets it from the side with big number six, the Terminator Andrew Spell Dennis to take it from the side. And again, the timeout is called this time by the Devils at 191. But I think Cal Bruton... Tomlinson would be pretty pleased with the way it's going now, and they'll just take a steady, suck in some air, and then come out nice and steady again. Uh, Paul Kuyper, anything you think the Falcons can do to get back in? Do they extend the defense, or do they just try and slog it out? They need to put the ball in the hole more than Hobart does. <laughs> uh, simple as that. Special expert comments. That's for my years of experience. We're playing a lot of money. We're paying a lot of money, Paul, for that sort of stuff. No, actually, the, the mistakes right now, the little mistakes from Falcons are, are hurting them, the turnovers. Um, and Tasmania is just uh, capitalizing on the turnovers with simple layups, um, playing much smarter down the stretch right now than the Falcons. 
I think the Falcons got to get the ball inside a bit more. They've, they've relied on their perimeter players. Mike Johnson's had an outstanding game from the outside, but I don't think that's going to win it for them down the line. They've got to get the ball inside. They've got to get the uh, Hobart Devils uh, reaching and committing fouls, going to the line, slowing the game down to get the momentum back their way. They've got to come up with some easy baskets, and uh, shooting from the perimeter like that are not easy baskets. Graham Vegas assessment there. Pretty accurate one too with five and a half minutes left. No need to panic and throw up rubbish. They trail by nine points though. Hobart's doing a little down the stretch. 100 plays 91. And they return to do battle. Terry Dozier on his feet and the Falcons can't. The injured forward. Great player and they're missing him badly again tonight. Cal Bruton, the veteran. And he's showing plenty of stuff. All the smarts. He's had a great game. As he did against Brisbane when he also led the floor and he got him up over the highly fancied bullets a few weeks ago. So they have had some wins. All of them have been at home. They're striving tonight for their first win on the road. They've had six attempts. This is number seven. And they look with the firepower they've got out there as though they'll just about be able to do it. But there's a long way to go. And on the slide, oh... That's desperation from Cassie. All but lost it. And this man, number 10, came up with it again. They go inside now to Stal Dennis. It's round with close. He stops and he jumps. And it was an off-balance shot. And the foul will go against Bruton. And it's one and one. The bonus foul situation applies here. That's five fouls to Cal Bruton. And we go down now for a, a shot which is very, very important. They've got to make one and one. Fouled in possession that time, Grant Kruger. An interesting we statistic for the take game. A look at this now. Yeah, there's the hand going in. It's interesting uh, to note here that the uh, the Falcons have only got one foul for this quarter, so they're not going. The, the the Hobart team are not going to be able to go to the line. Whereas, as we just saw, the Falcons going to the line now after each foul because uh, Hobart have uh, committed five fouls. They had to make the first one, and Grant Kruger couldn't do it. Yeah. So the, the Devils have got it. There goes that theory. Yeah. Uh, Bruton goes in, gets hammered. Referee called it clean. Everett Stevens goes in and takes everybody on, and somehow he put it up gently and he made it. And it was a good no call from the referees. Good call. Everett just ad-libbing there on that drive. Uh, obviously didn't have position, but just went up nice and soft, so the contact was very minimal. And a good call again, John Payne at the other end, caught the offensive foul. It was Wayne McDaniel just pushing big Neil Turner away with his right arm and picking it up with his left. That was a pretty intelligent call and, and, and good vision by the referee. Neil Turner needs to use his quickness and height against McDaniel, try to get around him and not let McDaniel pin him so he gets these easy baskets. And that time it worked. Four minutes left in this game, seven points the difference. They need to score again, the Falcons. And Everett Stevens could be the man, and he is. And no score, no score. Well, it's a charge called against Everett Stevens by Alan Godden. Now there's a brave call in the home court and we'd like to see that one again i'm not sure whether we can yes we can we'll see it in just a moment he's leaning forward on his jump shots and well that's very iffy the close up like he was still taking a few steps backwards uh once again a very tough call for a referee to make i wouldn't want to make it no it might have just taken the the sting out of the falcons run could have easily gone the other way Double team, double team. They go up and they take on Whiteside, but it's low with McDaniel. He won't miss from that range. There had to be a free man. There were two up playing on the guard, Whiteside. They got it down low, and there's your score. Delay of game on red. 102 plays 93. A delay of game warning for wasting time and throwing the ball away after it had gone down. A second one will lead to a technical foul and a couple of shots. Falcons. The NBL trying to keep the game going. Turner goes in. He's strong. He gets it to Kruger, who goes up. And Andrews Valdetis picks up a foul. Only his third. So no real problem for Andrews Valdetis, but it does give the Falcons a chance to stay in the event. Three and a half to go. 93 plays, 102. Must put these down, Grant Kruger. Money time. 
Paul Kuiper said, you've got to put the ball in the hole to win the game, and uh, it's turning out to be correct. That's why we pay him so much money. Yes, the accurate one. And, oh, dear, that's, that's ordinary, isn't it? Ordinary shooting down the stretch from the foul line. And usually that makes a break again, the, the foul shooting down the stretch, and uh, Frank Hooker, not the best foul shooter on the team, and uh, they're fouling the right guy. Yeah, but Everett Stevens went to the line and missed a short time ago, and he fouls that time. Leans into white side. Tried to strip it, but got plenty of arm. Four fouls, Everett Stevens. Three and a half minutes to go. 102 the Devils, 93 the Falcons. Hold it up, hold it up, hold it up. It's what we call a stack in the middle. You'll see players go blast out of there everywhere. Yep. All right, here we go, red. Bit of confusion there over the substitution. Grant Kruger out of the game. Comes to close. Spell Dennis looks for it inside, but it's with Casson round to white side. McDaniel has had a great game. He goes right to the hoop, and oh, magic, he's something else. 34 points. Super game from Wayne McDaniel. The money winner. And uh, I think they've got the money in this game. Oh, nasty stuff there. And a jump ball is called. It's Al Green going at it with Andrews foul. Dennis, plenty of excitement. Oh, don't do it, Al. He's got it all over you. Al says, yeah, I think I'll take it back with step. Bit of a wry Green. I don't think he was really going to go on with it. But uh, Al's aggressive, but he's not stupid. You got it. I don't know, Al's. I think oh, Al could stupid. take him. I think Al could take him. <laughs> <laughs> you think so? I'm Is glad he, you said that. He's from New York. <laughs> Does he try to take you on? No, we're friends. Oh, good. Now, here's an important player score here. We'll just about put it on ice. Oh, magnificent play from David Close. Those two great baskets. One from McDaniel, one from Close has really pushed it out now. It's 106 plays 93. That's a 13-point lead, 2.41 to go. And now it's time to really throw everything at them, I think, Paul. It looks beyond uh, redemption now, but maybe they've got something left to make a run. So disappointing for the Falcons because uh, the last few games have started off so well. Um, usually going to halftime with the lead just to see uh, it dwindle away at the end there. And uh, Tom Wisman will be very, very frustrated right now in his timeout. There's really nothing he can do to, uh, to get this team back, I don't think. There's Cal Fruit. He'll be pretty pleased with the way things are going, Cal. He's just saying more of the same. Cal Fruit there, and of course, don't miss the All-Star game next week. And that's going to be something else. It's the Australian Boomers. They're coming up against the NBL American All-Stars. be a great contest. It'll be a good hit out from the Boomers. They look bigger and stronger, and it's live. 8.30 here on NRTV next week. Of course, tonight we're going down via the ABC into Tasmania. And I think the people down there in the Apple Isle would be pretty pleased with what they've seen tonight. The guys have played very well together. And uh, it's, always, it's always great to win on the road. I think it feels even better than winning at home come into someone's house and you've you've taken the victory away from them and it always feels good on the way back on the plane makes the, the short uh, this nbl basketball match was proudly brought to you by mitsubishi pizza hut tui's and crossroads mitsubishi there you have it, 106 plays 93, 2 minutes 41 left, Newcastle need a miracle. Let's see whether they can produce it. Everett Stevens. Must be getting sick of getting so close, yet so far away. And he makes it, he gets it down to 11. Here's the press now, they'll try and force a turnover. They'll throw everything into it, oh, white side, genius. He makes it, he comes back, and oh, they've opened up the Falcons, and down she goes. The difficulty there, when you throw it all in at one end, you've got to be left wanting at the other if they can break it quickly. Well, the Falcons have got nothing to lose here. They've got to do that. They've got to press up. They've got to take risks, and uh, that's the risk you pay sometimes. Well, they almost came up with a ball, and they come up with a three. Vital three. Two minutes left. It's not over yet, folks. Al Green for three. Here's this pressure defense. If they can just get a break here, they can do something, and they forced the long it. one. Yes, that was the pass they tried to force. Full court stuff, and they got it. Al Green, got to be patient, goes out. Sean Dennis, three-point specialist. But tonight it doesn't go for him, and that's the one they need. And they go for the quick foul, which is smart play. Ten-point game, a minute 47 left. And it's the side ball. 
and Cal Bruton coming in for Andrew Stelvanis there. Obviously, Cal uh, wants the ball in little people's hands. I think a smart substitution here. Yeah. He's going to try and keep the ball away from the Falcons. Stop them keeping the foul. Well, as I say that. Yeah, well, obviously they're trying to rack up. Now they've got them in the bonus situation. They're just trying to give themselves an opportunity to get the ball back. And a couple of quick fouls there have slowed the game right down. And... If he misses this, the Falcons will get the ball back and maybe go down and bang one in. So, smart play from Mike Johnson, but uh, Cal can really, uh, really make him pay with a couple here. Al Green whispered in his ear as he walked uh, up the court to take the points. He might remind him that it is his 300th game and uh, how about giving me a 300th Bit game a present? Yeah. Well, if they get out of this, it'll be one of the greatest comebacks of all time because Cal's knocked that one down for his side. That's a, it's, a, it's, like, it's like Mount Everest now, isn't it? Ah, but they're still going at it. Big lead that time. Coming through hard was Sean Dennis, but it's all the Devils now. 90 seconds out, 110 to 98 they lead. What a disappointment after the Falcons had led so well by 19 early. McDaniel underneath. Oh, good work there from Turner. He's let him go. Well, fair enough to... 36 points for Wayne McDaniel. Outstanding effort. Well, actually, he was the catalyst for the comeback. He was the man who sparked up early, got them into it, and he's gone right on with the job. As Al Green goes in, it makes it. It was just laid off him then, let him go. Fouls left, right, and centre. Must be careful, they don't commit the flagrant foul, but that time it was okay. A momentary shot of to coach Tom Wiesman from the Falcons. A very disappointed man, and rightly so. Seen his team blow a uh, considerable lead in the opening quarter of this game. Unable to go on with it, allowed the Hobart Devils back into it and uh, try not to give teams a second chance, particularly this team, particularly when they're as desperate as, uh, as the Hobart team is for a win and a chance to stay in the NBL. Yeah, awfully tough now for Newcastle, isn't it? Because they go away to North Melbourne and South East Melbourne. That'll certainly test them on the road. That's after the All-Star break. 114 plays 100, and we're into the final minute of action here at Newcastle, where a memorable victory is definitely on the way, I feel, for the Hobart Cascade Devils. The Battle of the Brewers is going the way of the Southerners. Let's take a look at Cal Bruton as he leaves the court. There's his final foul. Tries to go down low. The quicks from Everett Stevens bring him back. Not a, not a lot of contact there, but just enough to call it up. But he'd be pretty pleased with his effort. It's been fine input from Cal Bruton. Number 55 sits and sends Everett Stevens to the foul line. Or at least try to improve the percentage. It is a glum looking Newcastle bench. They look desolate. I especially feel for uh, Michael Johnson, who was very optimistic at the beginning of this year. Um, Tom had put together a pretty good team, and right now things are looking a bit down, and um, it's, it's going to be up to him and the other guys to try to, try to bring this season back into, into a, a playoff mode for him. Yes, they're going to have to do something spectacular. Have a good run of home games toward the finish. They've just got to stay in touch. Stewart, oh, foul there. Referee lets it go. They push it round. They push it round quickly. Just trying to... Oh, it's almost a tackle. One and one's the call. Could have easily been a couple of shots and ball from the side. There wasn't much doubt. That was intentional. Sean Dennis will get a uh, position with the uh, Australian Kangaroos, I think, after Friday night's effort. Yes, they certainly need some tacklers. 43 seconds left, 114 plays 102. 115 plays 102. And they're really getting it right out now. Not to embarrassing proportions, but it's been a very impressive comeback by the Tasmanians. Led by McDaniel and Bruton, but good efforts too from Stewart and the young man we saw play a crucial role, Stiff. He was terrific. Here it comes down with McDaniel. He takes it. Oh, that was a nasty knock right to the face, and the charge is called. It's against McDaniel. Let's have a look at that again. You'll see that he was a bit lucky to get back up. 
Oh, right in the jaw. Elbow to the face. Not intentional. Just a little bit off balance. So with 30 seconds left, and the Devils on their way to a victory, we're up with Mike Johnson. Beautiful shot. He has shot well. Great three-pointer. But it's all too late. They still fight on, though, Newcastle. They show some character. Don't toss it in it again. Sean Dennis commits the foul. It's on number and sends Stewart down. One and one. We'll have a chance now to add to his statistics, which aren't too bad. I'll tell you what, Greg, if there was a six-point line out there tonight, um, I'm sure the Falcons would have won by 20. Mike Johnson's been shooting from uh, the old Broadmeadow Stadium. Very confident from the outside. Bates score sheet here. Mike Johnson has 33 points. Everett Stevens 21 and Al Green 20 for the Falcons. And it's been a great hand as we see fouls fall left, right and centre out there. Wayne McDaniel 36 for his side and the one and one goes the other end now. And McDaniel uh, shoving, Neil, shoving Neil Turner in the back there. Actually sending him airborne I think. Neil Turner not the, not the biggest guy in the world. He has to run around in the shower right. to get wet, you know? <laughs> One of those type of things. <laughs> done a good job tonight, though. He's done all right. Pulled down a heap of boards. He's been pretty strong underneath, particularly at the defensive end. And his intimidation factor has been well in play. But again, not enough. 13 seconds left now. 116 plays 107. In the hands of Don Whiteside. Comes down, gets it round and close. It's off to Stewart, who had a look. Decides to go for the safer shot. And obliging there. Here's Justin Cass. Just in case they needed it. Long shot, last shot of the 300. The game goes to Al Green. But steaming home, it was the Hobart Devils. Too good for the Falcons. 118 to 107. After the Devils had trailed by 19 points in the early stages of the game. And there's that man. Great game, Graham Baker, by Wayne McDaniel. Wayne McDaniel, an outstanding game. Congratulations. Must go to the Hobart team. After being down by 19 points in the opening quarter, are able to come back and win by a handsome margin, 11 points a big turnaround for the Hobart team and Cal Bruton must be uh, feeling very happy with his team as he goes back to Hobart to continue the NBL challenge absolutely it's high fives all around for Hobart Andrews Valdetta leaves the court it's 118 107 Hobart victors here tonight And the Newcastle Entertainment Centre proves a happy hunting ground tonight anyway for the visitors. The Hobart Devils getting home 118 to 107. Their first win on the road this year at their seventh attempt. They'll be mighty pleased about it because it keeps their NBL hopes alive this year. Graham Baker, a great comeback because they were down and out early, almost hit the canvas. Lucky number seven for Hobart, but they certainly deserve their victory. Down 19 points in the opening quarter of the game. Fought back, didn't panic. The statistics show uh, not very much in it, actually. 92% to 81% from the free throw line was probably the most telling statistic. 54% playing 49% of the Falcons from the field. Turnovers were pretty much the same and the rebounds were pretty even. Hobart deserved victory and uh, they look good and I think they'll win a few more games from here. Yes, all those shots were missed from the free throw line by the Falcons in the second half. Well, Paul Kuyper again, he had to suffer another loss from the sideline, Paul. It's difficult, I know, but uh, the Falcons now have really got it all to do. Yeah, it's a very character-building time now for the Falcons. Um, they've got a week of training, then they go down to Melbourne for a tough double. Um, the veterans need to step up and uh, really, really come out and uh, help the younger guys with this uh, tough time. Um, and Tom Wisman, he's going to pull out all his coaching tricks um, for this next couple of weeks. Yeah, we thank both uh, Paul Kuyper, our guest commentator, and of course co-commentator Graham Baker for their help tonight. But there's some great sport coming up over the next few days on NRTV. Don't miss it later on this afternoon. New South Wales play New Zealand coming to you live at 2 o'clock from Waratah Rugby Stadium in Sydney. That will be a great clash, no doubt about it. And of course, next week, it's 8.30 p.m. live around the country on Saturday night. The Boomers play the NBL American All-Stars. That will be one great game. It'll be a shootout and a slow.